Come on, can you just lift your voice and pray in the spirit of that revelation, in the spirit of that song, powerful song by the worship team. You are God's representative on the earth. You are a revelation of heaven. Everything that heaven stands to represent, you are on the earth. You are an expression of his power, of his glory, of his fullness, of we received and grace, even for grace. Come up with your mouth and just pray. I'm his vessel on the earth. Say it to yourself. I am his vessel of it on the earth. The kingdom of God is here and now because he lives in me. For as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we. You are not the victim, you are the victor. You are not the conquered, you are more than a conqueror. You are a success, not a failure. You are everything that God represents. And as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. Come on, prophesy to yourself. Don't just stand there quiet. Come on, prophesy to yourself. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome the world. For greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory of them that overcomes, even our faith. I am more than an overcomer. I am more than a conqueror. Habra Yes, Father. In Jesus' name. Now, just open your eyes for a few minutes. We are going to pray again, but just listen to me. This is one of the reasons why God gave me the revelation of that I am confession. It wasn't gotten from somewhere. It wasn't retrieved from a book. It was a revelation that came to me in 2019. And God told me that one of the greatest advantage that the enemy has against his people is their ignorance simply put deliberate ignorance because if you are ignorant of who you are in christ as a believer is because you are deliberately ignorant it's all written black and white in scripture and god told me this he said that every time jesus said i am in the scripture whatever was attached to that was not just referring to him alone it was referring to us as well in the in the john's gospel jesus is called the only begotten son of god but in hebrews the bible calls him the first begotten meaning that there are other begotten and james tells us in chapter 1 of james verse 18 that of his of of him have he begotten us and we are the first fruits so everything that jesus was you are the bible says as he is as he is just that revelation alone gives you access to the unlimited grace and power all of a sudden you stop running away from the things that have been chasing you and you become the pursuer the bible didn't say that we are conquerors he said we are more than conquerors in other words jesus paid the price he fought the battle and he has retrieved all dominion and handed it over to us and he left us on earth for one thing that till he comes we must keep the devil under subjugation so if any time the devil is powerful in your life or the enemy becomes powerful yesterday i had to correct somebody on phone i said don't say you are broke to correct i said don't say that 
every time you say let me tell you something the bible says in exodus chapter 3 verse 14 that his name is called what i am isn't it and one of the commandments is that you must not use the name of the lord in vain so every time you say i am sick you use the name of the lord in vain every time you say i am poor you use his name in vain every time you say i am broke you use his name in vain so you are breaking the commandments already why because his name is called i am so what are you supposed to say i am rich yeah. i am prosperous look at the confession he said i am i i i am his prosperity amplified in other words if you think you have seen prosperity look at my life and let me tell you something that's the reason why the confession says i am a mystery revealer because looking at you now with five naira in your pocket somebody may just give up and conclude that that's all that there is about you but the bible says that we have a supply that is according to his riches in glory not central bank how that you may be broke now and tomorrow you are swimming in millions is a mystery that man cannot explain and that we must we must let you must come to a point where you are conscious of who you are this is first level into spiritual victory as far as life is concerned if you don't know who you are you'll be afraid of many things when you know who you are some pray your prayer points will reduce and your prayer life will increase you understand because many people have prayer points they don't have prayer life how do i know every time you go to pray you have list before god the moment the list gets exhausted your prayers are finished but because we are full of the revelation of who we are prayer becomes an experience we look up to because every time we step into the place of prayer we enter fellowship we assume the mode that the word of god describes about us and i beg you from henceforth learn to know and declare to yourself the psalmist says i shall declare the decree it has been decreed by god but you must learn to declare it don't look at your current condition and think that is all that there is about you and your confession becomes that every time you make a confession you are sealing whatever it is you are saying and the best way that we can agree with god on earth the best way we can become heaven on earth is through our words confessing that which has been written concerning us even jesus said lo i come in the volume of the books that is written of me when he entered the temple he, they gave him isaiah to read after reading everything the spirit of the lord is upon me and he sat down the bible says he looked at them and said today this scripture is fulfilled in other words 500 years before now because isaiah was written 500 years before the coming of jesus 500 years before now every other person you saw didn't look like it question was his name written black and white jesus in that prophecy no so you can look at what the word of god says and claim it to be yours the bible didn't say mary shall conceive he said a virgin shall conceive what did mary do she gave permission for the prophecy to be fulfilled she said be it unto me according to your word were there no virgins in israel they were that's why when we come for services like this that's that's what i mean when i say if you don't have an expectation create one the fact that your name was not called does not mean what is said does not consign you no no the reason why we are here is that's why it's called service you are here for god to cause a continuous and a progressive upgrade in your life that you today will become better than you yesterday and when that happens your life becomes full of testimonies you remember that our song i see it I feel it. Testimonies are everywhere. Can we do that song just once? I see it. I feel it. Testimonies, testimonies are everywhere. One more time. I see it. I see it. I feel it. I feel it. Learn to say it to yourself. Testimonies. Testimonies are everywhere around. Say it to yourself. I see it. I see it. I feel it. I feel it. Testimonies are 
testimonies. Testimonies are everywhere. I like this part. One, two, three, go. I'm in the middle of it. Prophesy to yourself. Say, I'm in the middle of it. Not outside. You are in the middle of it. It's a peace. Testimonies. Testimonies are everywhere. I'm in the middle of it. I'm in the middle of it. Come on, dance with squad. Dance with squad. Come on. I'm in the middle of it. It's happening right now. It's happening Not tomorrow. Happening Not now. next week. Right now. Hey. Come on, say testimony. Testimony is everywhere. Let me give you my testimony this week. Listen. When I hear people complain that God does not answer prayer, now, not before, now, welcome sir. Now, if I hear people complain that God does not answer prayer, what they are saying is a mystery to me. It's something I can't understand. You know what it means to be a pastor? Every day and every night, there are text messages coming to your phone of problems. And this morning, I just thought about the entire week and I realized that every prayer point that came to my phone, God answered. Yeah. Glory to his name. This one will tell you, oh, apostle this, apostle that, and I will just send them a word. And I realized that God answered everything. I hope you have not forgotten. At the first service of this year, I told you that for us, this year is the year of answered prayers. When you walk in that realm, testimonies are everywhere. I tell you. And if you came here with a prayer point, it is converted to a testimony now. Listen, I don't care how old that problem is. It is not as old as the ancient of days. The Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he repents of his word. Has he said it, shall he not do it? Has he commanded it, and shall he not make it? Testimonies are everywhere. One more time. I, I see it. it. Prophesy it to yourself. I feel it. Sing it until you become conscious of it. Testimonies are everywhere. I see it. Say it. I see it. I feel it. I feel it. Testimonies. Testimonies are everywhere. Lift your voice and just give God a praise. Give God the glory. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give him the honor. Blessed be the name of the Lord our God. Who was and is and is to come. Come on, come on, come on. Lift your voice. Bless his holy name. Let everything that has breath. Praise the name of the Lord. Wherever you are, inside, outside, online, open your mouth, lift up a praise to Him. Forget about what is around you, forget about who is looking at you, forget about your problems, and open your mouth and give Him an adoration, give Him the glory, give Him the praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Kabarakabusha. Here, Kabarakabusha. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Kabrakosha, Nabrata, Labra, Gedelika, Bosumbra, Nanama. Erobosina, Mahandra, Dabakasi, Abaha. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. Who forgiveth your iniquities and heals your disease. Who redeems your life from destruction and crowns you with loving kindness and honor. Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed. Your strength is renewed like the eagles. They look to him and they were enlightened. 
and they were not ashamed. Come and give him praise. Bless him. In Jesus' name. One prayer point before we sit down. Tonight is going to be a night of prayer. We are going to travel till we prevail in prayers. I am certain of this one thing. That this is not the best of yourself. This is not all that God has for you. The Bible says that the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter. Please give us Proverbs 23 verse 18. That shines brighter and brighter. There must be a progressive and a continuous flow of the grace and the mercies of God in your life. Day after day, God must change you by his power to become the reflection of that which he has written concerning you. And tonight we are just here to pray to agree with heaven and step into the next phase of glory of greatness of grace are we together is that good enough for us tonight i may not preach long tonight we are just going to pray and i want you to open up your heart because tonight there's going to be a shift in the spirit Amen. proverbs 23 verse 18 okay let me just read it from my bible I would have quoted it, but let me just read it out for us. 23 verse 18. For surely there is a year after. King James says, for surely there is an end. To what? To everything. Who has King James? Please help us. There is an end. And thine expectation. So God is not against you having expectation. You've heard people say that why was you have expectation? No, the Bible says, He thought to have you not asked. Some people are too shy of asking from God. Then who are you asking from? Because what makes him God is that he's, re he's ready to freely give us all things. The Bible says, If he did not spare his son, but gave him for us, how much more shall he not with him freely give us? He said, ask and you shall receive that your joy. Not just asking for cars, houses, or material things alone. That's good. It's good to ask for that. But we are asking that he will make us become all that he has written concerning us. There is a place called fullness. There is a place called glory. Where all that he has destined you to be, you become. The Bible says, surely there is an end. There is an end to that affliction. There is an end to poverty. There is an end to lack. There is an end to that failure. There is an end to that reproach. There is an end to that cycle of attack. There is an end to that pattern of retrogression, of delay, of stagnation. There is an end to that prayerlessness. There is an end to that spiritual depravity. Surely there is an end. And thine expectation shall not be cut off. In the next two minutes, I want you to lift up your voice and raise a cry to heaven. Whatever it is that must come to an end in your life and whatever it is that must begin, open your, ma your mouth and lift it up to him. Some of you, it may be the end of one season spiritually for the rise of a new season. This is not all of God that you have experienced. No. For some of you, it must be the facing away of certain challenges. Certain problems. Maybe you came for miracle service. You watched other people receive. But it looks like you went back the same. Today is another day. The Bible says today, today is the day of salvation. Come on, can you lift your voice and pray? Uh, 
Kabrako Shamam Rahadeba Subaraha de Bakudias and the Praka Paragado La Pradega Basia Babaradozi Ila Parabashada Baladia. Just play something, just play something for me. I need to connect spiritually. I need to connect, just play something for me. Kila Graba Sapro de Ziprahanama Eroko Zama Cabra Namashia Bada. What is that expectation? Lift it up to him. What is that heart cry? Raise it up to him. Come on, don't be quiet. Don't be quiet. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Don't be quiet like Jacob wrestle. Like Jacob wrestle with heaven. Wrestle until you are settled. Hey, Glory, Navara Kostya. Another level of glory. Come on, come on. Another level of grace. Another dimension in the spirit. Greater access to his fullness. Come on, don't just look around. It sits tonight for a change. It sits tonight for transformation. It sits for an upgrade. God is not true with you. This is not the best of you. This is not all that there is. Come on, open your mouth and Come on, open 
your mouth until the heavens are open. Don't close your mouth until the heavens are In Jesus name. Luke chapter 3 verse 21 and 22 quickly this night we are going to pray until there is a breakthrough until there is a release your destiny must give birth your destiny must put to bed according as God has destined in this season Luke chapter 3 verse 21 listen now when all the people were baptized it came to pass listen to this listen it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying and what praying if you read Matthew's account it did not capture this phrase and praying what happened there next the heaven was opened if you read Matthew's account you would think that as soon as he came out of the water the heavens opened no it was going to be an issue of a breakthrough it had it had to he had to enforce it to happen start getting used to the word enforcement because in this life nothing will just happen until you make it happen is one of the laws of spiritual intelligence even when God has written it concerning you that you sit down and close your fold your hands and wait that it will come to pass that's when you you people say destiny can be delayed but cannot be denied it's not true if the devil cuts you off before before destiny is fulfilled well, has it not been denied it has been the bible says the thief cometh not but to steal kill and destroy don't follow don't follow all those sayings that destiny can be delayed and cannot be denied it can both be delayed and denied there has to be an enforcement agency a spiritual law enforcement agency that says god this is what you have spoken about me in this season and i declare that it must happen the bible says jesus came out of the water and as he was praying the heavens were open listen we are going to pray because for some of you here what you need is an open heaven now what when i say an open heaven i'm speaking in figurative terms are we are we together when I say an open heaven, what I mean is that you walk under an atmosphere of divine approval. You walk under an atmosphere of divine favor. That every day that passes, it doesn't come to an end until somebody favors you. That you walk under an atmosphere of divine power. You walk under an atmosphere of angelic intervention. That's what it means to walk under open heavens. It means to walk in a realm of answered prayer. It goes beyond just your prayer to anyone that is connected. You know, let me tell you something. That's why I like prayer. 
a time can come where you have done business with God in the place of prayer you no longer need to pray for people your altar of prayer in the spirit begins to speak and anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord with faith on that on that covenant receives answer I'm telling you it's a realm where every human, every believer can get to it's not just for men of God night we are not going to close our mouth until the heavens open for some of you here some of you are carrying listen to me listen very carefully and i pray you are not one of those who are sitting down some of you are carrying bundles of prophecies over your life and right now a cycle is about to repeat itself this is already the sixth moon june we're already at the half month of year half half of the year last year you carried the prophecies till december nothing happened now you are already in june are you going to sit down and watch other people come into the fullness of what let me tell you something until you insist it will look as though god is lying the bible says jesus came out of the water he had fulfilled it the heavens were supposed to open but it's for some reason it refused to but jesus understood the technology of prayer and the bible says as he prayed the heavens all opened and the spirit of god rested upon him another time we saw the heavens open again in the new testament was the time of stephen the bible says while he was making his defense it's, the bible says he was full of the spirit and he gazed into heaven so open heavens mean that you are full of the spirit 247 that's the realm where no devil can dare you i tell you and this night i want you to travel until you feel a release in the spirit travel until something gives birth this night don't just leave it to time and chance huh that was old testament it's not so true that time and chance happens to them all the them all does not mean that you are included but that there is something you can do that can invoke the mercies of God. Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for a time of favor. Yea, a set time has come. It takes prayer to insist. In the next five minutes, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Your mouth. Insist.
Let your power flow in this place. Let your power flow in this place. I pray for signs and wonders in this place. Let your presence flow in this place.
Jesus' name. Please be seated briefly. Briefly. And then we'll pray again. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. I'm just going to read about two verses or two scriptures in the Bible. And then just admonish us and then we will pray. Dominion true prayer Philippians 4 verse 6 I'm going to read the King James and then you will give me an NLT I just I want to pick out one phrase or one sentence there Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 it says be careful for nothing but in everything by what by what but in everything by what? Prayer. And supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. Give it, give it to us in New Living Translation. It says, don't worry about anything. In do what? Pray about what? Read it together. One to go. Don't worry about anything instead. Pray about how many things? How many things? Some things? Almost all things? Everything. Now, listen. If God is telling us that for everything we do, prayer must be involved, it means that prayer is actually a universal law it means that prayer is actually a law when it comes to do with dominion you see let me tell you something this is dominion let me explain it to you in a layman's language dominion is when you cannot do anything without a particular thing in a layman's language that's just what it means Dominion means when you when nothing can happen or nothing can exist without certain things put in the equation. So if the Bible says we should pray about everything, <laughs> that means if you are not praying about anything in your life, that thing is probably as good as dead. Whether it concerns you, whether it concerns the prophecies of God over your life, whether it concerns your ministry, whether it concerns your business or your marriage or your you know we live in a time where believers are so are so big enough to handle their problems we live in a time where many believers feel that they have arrived that there are parts of their life they can isolate from god now you may not say it that you are not depending on god for this aspect of your life but your prayerlessness indirectly communicates it as far as God is concerned, anything in your life that you don't take up in prayers, you are telling God that you can, you can do without Him in that area. And that's the language of pride. And the Bible says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The first stage of humility is when you come to a conscious state of understanding that without Him, I can do nothing. You know, many years ago, they taught us that the word Christian, this is what it means. The word Christian is Christ 
and I A N. It means when you put it together, it means Christ is all now. And when you separate it, it means without Christ, I am nothing. In other words, when you remove the Christ and you leave I A N, it means what? I am nothing when Christ is absent. But when you put the Christ and it becomes Christian, it means Christ is all now. So Christianity is first of all a life of total dependence on the grace that is made available by God to us. And you tap into this every time you begin to tender prayer and supplication around that particular thing. Listen, let me tell you something. As far as I'm concerned, you cannot understand dominion if you isolate prayer from the equation. Let me share something with us. Oh God, help me this night. Genesis chapter 1. Listen carefully. Genesis chapter 1. Who says, God made man in his image and his likeness. Isn't it? And he blessed them and he said that they should have dominion right in chapter 2 God formed man from the dust of the ground did he bless that man no when God formed man from the dust of the ground what did he do he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul there was no blessing attached to that man it was the man that God created in Genesis chapter 1 that God blessed and assign dominion he said let them have dominion in other words as far as the earth is concerned even god cannot call the shots yes somebody will say but apostle the bible says the earth is the lord and the fullness thereof that's very good in terms of ownership in terms of the one who created it but if you read down that chapter it was not the lord that said lift up your heads O ye gate hold on was it the Lord who said it? Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, the everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. When you are done with this snapping, you can shift this like it's distracting me. <laughs> Amen. And the King of glory, so even the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, who made the earth, it took a human being to command the gate of a territory to open up for him. That means that the earth the bible says the heavens of heaven belongs to god that is where he has his dominion in heaven it is in heaven that you can say god let it be done according to your will and it will happen because forever oh god your word is settled where in heaven not on earth if his will will be done on earth it takes a human envoy to bring it to pass that's why god said let them have the moment god made that statement he handcuffed himself. That's the reason why sometimes there are certain challenges around your life. And you are there waiting for God to come and move it. And God is waiting for you to call upon him. Or God is waiting for you to insist and engage the enforcement agency of prayer. Many people are waiting for God to act. Meanwhile, God has already placed a law that on earth let them have. So the man God created in Genesis 1 was the man that God gave dominion to. The question is we need to understand which man that was. The man that God formed in chapter 2, God didn't tell him anything. He didn't bless him or give him any. He only told him don't eat from the tree of good knowledge of good and evil. That's all. That was the reason why if you read your Bible in Genesis chapter 3, when God started to, uh, you know, when God was bringing out punishment when they fell God cursed the serpent isn't it? God cursed the woman he said in sorrow you shall put you, you, you shall, you shall put, bring to bear I will multiply your sorrow at childbirth and all of that, all of that but when it came to man, read your Bible very well, especially if you have King James or New King James, the Bible says and God said to Adam he didn't say and God said to the man he said and God said to the serpent and God said to the woman but when he came to the man he didn't say and God said to the man you know why because if God has said to the man he would have cursed the one he created in chapter 1 and the law is that if God has blessed something it cannot be cursed 
I have received a commandment to bless. He has blessed. And I cannot reverse it. That was why God said to Adam, the curse that came, came upon the man that was formed in chapter 2. Not the man that was created. What that means is that the man created in chapter 1 was a spirit. The one created in chapter 2 was flesh, was the body that that spirit will live in. That means that our dominion is domiciled where? In the spirits. That's why we pray. I'm just, I just want to admonish you so that we can pray. So anytime, instead of praying about something, you are complaining about that thing. It means you are trying to solve what is spiritual, naturally. No way. Tell your neighbor it is spiritual. Tell your neighbor life is spiritual. So if you must exercise and come into the fullness of the dominion, you must understand that it is first of all domiciled in the spirit. Watch this. That's the reason why curses are prevalent. I'm going to, I, I told us I was going to do a teaching on that. Actually, I would have done that anyway. But this morning, I began to sense something in the atmosphere. I, I began to sense that there was need for breakthrough. So God had to tell me, keep your teaching one side and pray. Curses are domiciled in time, in the flesh. But blessings exist from where? Eternity. So dominion is simply enforcing the blessings that are registered in eternity into time. That means that prayer is a law enforcement agency that permits the movement of things, the transport of things from the spiritual into the physical people think that prayer is just to make you spiritual no you are already spiritual prayer is now moving that which is yours from the realm where it exists into the realm where it should enter into yes god has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places spiritual blessings in heavenly places but it takes the the law of prayer to activate it and bring it to manifest many christians in the body of christ are yet to understand this one mystery or truth that there is a relationship between prayer warfare and finances that's the reason why you it looks like you can't go beyond a particular salary it looks like you can't go beyond a level financially because you think that when you pray you only break through spiritually that breakthrough spiritually must affect every area of your life including your finance that means that if you are walking in sync with the wealth that god has destined you to walk in as a child of god it means that something is happening to your prayer life your prayer life is ascending so every time you break into that realm of dominion through prayer everything in your life physically must adjust to that shift because it's by, it's by prayer that we command change get this truth into your system nothing changes until you pray i tell you nothing absolutely nothing who will change it is it god if god should just come without your will and change things around you it's illegal Satan can charge him for that. You don't know. <laughs> the Bible says, Moses, Exodus chapter 14, with the children of Israel, over two million people, standing in front of the Red Sea. Behind them, the Egyptians were coming with their chariots. Mountains beside them, a sea before them. Moses told them, stand still and see the salvation of God. After coming them, that he went to God and started crying. God said, why are you talking to me? He said, you tell the people to move forward. But go, I've already given you the signature move. Stretch out that rod in your hand. In other words, yes, I can part the Red Sea. But I can't do it until you license me to do it. Because every time God intervenes on earth, somebody, a human agent, gave him permission. And that license is not a permanent license. You have to renew it every day when you pray. You don't understand what I mean. 
It's a very simple truth, but if you get it, many things will shift in your life. That nothing changes until I make it change in prayer. That's why he says, pray about everything. Don't look down on anything at all. The Bible calls him the adversary. That he goes around seeking whom to devour. That very small space of prayerlessness you give him, he can enter. And knowing that his time is short, he can do so much damage, it will take the mercies of God to repair. So yes, we pray to receive from God. We also pray until it is delivered. You understand? You pray and secure it until it comes to you. You don't just wake up and listen to a prophecy about your life and oh that's all that there is and then you go and sit down no you pray so that your prayer can become like an escort escorting it from that realm <clears throat> oh yeah the bible says listen that daniel prayed for 21 days unknown to daniel his answer was being withheld unknown to him but daniel had a lifestyle and a culture of prayer that he will pray until he sees it happen so guess what? It was his prayer that brought Michael from heaven and escorted, brought the angel and escorted him down to Daniel. That means that your prayer is like a police escort. That God has said it. I believe it. Does not settle it though. Let me tell you. God said it. I believe it. Between I believe it and it happened is a space enough for the enemy to manipulate that's why he has his principalities in high places that's what the bible says it says i will wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in heavenlies your answer your blessing is coming from where from the heavens so between that place and this place there are wicked spirits positioned there in the atmosphere to see that they withhold it from happening why number one so that god will look like a liar when god said it will happen in july it didn't happen in july god becomes a liar to you you because it becomes difficult for you to believe god and then once you don't believe the god again and doubt sets in it becomes difficult for god to bring to pass what he has said concerning you it becomes difficult for you to see results number two so that you don't have it after all so you don't just pray to, 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 to get an answer. You pray to secure that answer. You pray to secure that blessing to your space. And I, I, like I always say, the source of a thing determines its sustenance. If your prayer was what brings it, it's your prayer that will keep it. That's why you have heard of people who got jobs. After praying, they prayed and got a job. Two months later, they fell sick and they are in the hospital. Why? Because they thought that after the job had come, that's, that's the end. It's no way. Who, in fact, let me tell you the truth. The more you rise in the blessings of God, you more, the more the devil becomes jealous of you. So you need to surround yourself with an atmosphere of prayer. You need to enter into a place of true dominion. Until you come to a point where like Luke chapter 4 tells us, and the devil left him for a season. You have mastered that place of prayer and your territory is secured. Satan knows that he becomes impenetrable. He leaves you. That's the reason why five people can be in the house and everybody falls sick. One person is living as though there is no sickness. And they are all siblings. I, I pray that before the end of this year, I will do a teaching on that. The dominion systems of the kingdom. Last year, God showed me six of them. Six. The dominion systems. You want to come into dominion? You want to come into a point where you, you really become in charge. And you really become the boss of everything that God has designed for your life. You really become the owner of your destiny. You want to come to a realm where it looks like the devil does not exist. Where you are rising consecutively progressively into the purposes of God for your life. Prayer, number one. There are others, but maybe when we do that teaching, we'll get to it. Prayer, number one. So prayer secures answers from heaven. Prayer changes things. 
prayer demolishes wickedness go to a family where you see the power of darkness holding sway all kinds of affliction nobody's rising you rise they cut you off get a job today they sack you six months time my answer to that is if there is a man that will rise and pray if there is a man that will enter into a place of dominion you see one thing with our God is that God is not a God of numbers necessarily no the Bible says that he is able to win with many and conquer with few that if so much as just one man can rise in a clan in a community in a territory by prayer God can invest a grace upon that man that secures the entire territory the Bible says by a prophet he led two million people out of Egypt 430 years of slavery it took one man with his rod Shepherd's rod to humble all the gods of Egypt it doesn't take God too much if only we play our part you sit down there and think that you are just going to be rising in the anointing just like that don't you know that your rise in the anointing affects the kingdom of darkness that there is a level of penetration you get in the spirit that gives you a bigger advantage over the kingdom of darkness brother let me tell you the truth this life is a warfare not funfair for every access you receive in the spirit there is a threat sent to the kingdom of darkness that's why jesus told peter he says i will give you the keys to the kingdom and then what will happen what you bind on earth is bound in heaven why would there be binding and losing after receiving the keys because your access determines your level of warfare some of you are here as you are looking at me now some of you there are destinies attached to you some of you god is sending you as fiery evangelists you don't look like it now because you have not become conscious of that which god is saying or maybe because you have not prayed enough to see by revelation that this is what is written of me some of you god is sending you as apostles to nations but little do you know that there is a demonic siege that is built around you to ensure that you don't rise into the fullness of that which is written on you that's the reason why we break through by prayers say pastor my problem is spiritual laziness start praying start praying just decide not to give in to, to laziness decide not to give in to, to 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 what's the word i will use again complacency let me when i discover that nothing in my life will change until i partner with god in prayer nobody had to tell me again nobody had to tell me again maybe you are here you say oh apostle will pray for me some of you are even waiting after the service you join line you apostle will pray again and it will work but for some of us that we don't have anybody around uncle And when you truly pray, a time will come where you will discover that the distance between heaven and earth is not far. That the distance between the spirit and the physical is a man. Yes. Yes. He said, and let them have dominion. That dominion that is domiciled inside of your spirit, a time comes as you expand in the place of prayer it begins to find expression everything around you begins to act like a living thing, everything begins to grow as your prayer life is growing your finance is growing as your prayer life is growing, your peace is growing so that when people tell you they have problems to you, it's like it doesn't exist there is a realm where you there is a realm where you can experience complete deliverance and your deliverance is sustained paul said that and god will deliver me from every evil i'm telling you didn't he teach them how to pray and say deliver us from all not some all so even if there's, there's an attack deliver us from all there is a realm where deliverance stays but it's prayer that opens it there is a realm where divine health is 
it's prayer that launches you into it it's either prayer brings about the reality of that thing or prayer opens you to the revelation and that revelation determines your dominion one time i listened to bishop david Oedepo, i think uh, um, a documentary of him or something like that and in his early days when he was he, he, st he was to start ministry he went to pray for three days seeking the face of god and on the third day the lord spoke to him and said to him henceforth as you say it you will see it and he knows that god is not a man that he should lie that's the reason why you can see him stand and boldly declare and it will happen why because in prayer something was secured ah, some of you don't know how to take advantage of the weakness of god one of the weakness of god is that he doesn't talk always but anything he says becomes permanent that you can pray your way into the promises of god and a time comes where god will take those promises and make a covenant with you and on the strength of that covenant satan is stayed away from your life and it affects your children children yes prayer prayer there are not many things i know in my life but this one this one if there is confusion around i know where to go if there is problem around i don't join people and and and, and sympathize i'm not a sympathizer and I, I never will the highest sympathy word of sympathy i can give you it is well that's the highest if i tell you sorry it's maybe because i offended you but sorry because something happened no way the bible says say unto the righteous it is well that's the highest sympathy i can give any man if things are falling around if 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 if, if, if everything is shaking around me i know where the control room is i know how to sit there until there is order the bible says and god who commanded light to shine out of darkness listen god created the heavens and the earth full stop suddenly the bible says that the earth was without form and was void and darkness was all where did that one happen verse 3 and god said he saw darkness but from the place of dominion he spoke and light came out of it that means in the midst of chaos you can speak to that chaos that situation and it will give birth to a testimony it happens by prayer not by wish not by wish even faith doesn't come <laughs> You know the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and, the, and hearing by the word of God. Listen, the literal meaning in that scripture is a hearing that comes by revelation. That God speaks to you. That hearing can only come when you have prayed. It is prayer that opens you to an atmosphere in the spirit where God will now speak that word and faith is built in your spirit where you believe without any shadow of doubt inside of you that this that God has spoken will come to pass it's prayer that opens you there I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you if there is anything that can be a possibility in your life it's prayer that will launch you into it somebody say prayer and tonight we are going to pray listen, this night you are going to pray until something opens up I want to teach us how to insist. Are, 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 are you with me? I want to teach you my attitude, what I do. How to insist until it comes to pass. Some of you usually will have an experience. Let me explain it. Some of you, when you pray, sometimes, all of a sudden, you begin to feel a level of confidence and boldness inside of you. Isn't it? And that time, you even begin to shout. You begin to roar. How many of us experience that? Now, what that means is that your prayer has launched you into a realm of dominion in the spirit. What God is saying by that activity is that from that point, whatever is an anomaly in your life, command it to come to order. That is the point where you can release the spirit of prophecy and change things. Some of you don't know. You just think that's where I, I'm high in the spirit. I get excited. Ba, 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 and you finish and you go, no. Once you notice that switch in the spirit, you have entered the place of dominion. At that point, your word becomes like the word of God. Anything you say is, is, is done. 
That's the realm I live in every day. Because anytime problem can come to my phone as a text message. So from that realm, I can text you and say it will happen and it will happen. So you don't even need to hear the voice again. Your text message carries the same power. But if you don't study this, if you don't understand this in the place of prayer, you will not take advantage of the resources that are available to you. You are going for an interview. Thank God they have called you. You, you, you passed the test. Now you are going for an interview. Sleep that night. And the next day wear your suit and go there for the interview. That's why you know that suit and paper doesn't qualify you for job. If you are not careful, that's why you will know that that thing you call CV can be paper before the eyes of somebody. Until you understand that it is the spiritual that affects the natural. That instead of you to sleep that night, you wake up and begin to program things. Whoever is going to that place, I declare that the favor of God is upon me. As I sit for that interview, everybody is compelled in that panel to give me the job. That's why you finish it. Then in the morning, you go there and meet people who have been reading all night. And after they are reading, somebody looks at you from the panel and say, we must give you this job. You have not seen that kind of thing? They interview you and then they come outside. While you are leaving the panel, they interview you. You come outside. They tell the other people, okay, you can go. We God bless you. Or we'll get back to you. We have gotten. You know that we we'll get back to you. <laughs> if they tell you we'll get back to you, just go and pray. Oh. The Bible says, and Esther, and God gave Esther favor in the sight of everybody that saw her. Is there a realm like that? Yes, there is. It's in the place of prayer. Where somebody can tell you, this night I will deal with you and tomorrow morning is the one helping you. Did you read your Bible? The Bible says that the best of man is like a vapor. As far as that problem is from a man, it's no longer a problem. Because that man can be reprogrammed you are going for a business deal a contract you are submitting your 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 your, your papers so that they can give you a contract you, you 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 enforce it by prayer you command it to come some of you don't know how to call things some of you don't know how to use your authority in the spirit sickness everywhere in the family and you join everybody and you are just sympathizing with everybody complaining with everybody when you can rise in the night and say no way i rebuke the spirit of affliction depart and never return and the next day everybody's well it happens there's a place like that a lady i don't know maybe she's listening online from kaduna i believe text me on monday he said man of god my children have been sick for two weeks now i know it's an attack of the devil but please help me pray i said ah, this sentence is wrong now if you have already diagnosed it that is an attack from the devil, then don't you know what to do? So I told her, okay, do A, B, C. And by evening, when I called her, all the children will find they were even making noise. So things can change. So your life can change like night and day. You will never know that certain things are not only possible, but are readily available until you begin to step into prayer. I'm telling you, it's, it works more than charm. It works more than charm. What did David tell Goliath? He said, you come against me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come against you with what? In the name of the Lord. So there's somebody in your office, he's coming against you with charm. That's the end of that person. If you understand this mystery, that's when you will know that charm that charm can be like a red cloth you know <laughs> i told somebody during the week i said i was i wish i was working like you people i wish i was in the sector like you people me me in that place and a witch is there no way didn't the bible say suffer not a witch to live me i'm in that office and there's a witch i remember one of my mentors one time he was pastoring with living faith then and they sent him to pastor the branch in Bida and some of you who know Niger State especially Bida you know that's a terrible place 
all kinds of witchcraft witchcraft in the day not just in the night <laughs> witchcraft by day and night <laughs> and this guy went there and began to pray and began to muster the church to pray and then they began to rise in dominion one day the chief of the witches in that city visited him and the chief of the witches said you have been disturbing us and since you not allow us to rest in seven days time you will die so pack out of this place or in seven days you die you know what the man did the man turned back and looked at him he said too late because you before the end of this night you are going to die the chief of the witches went back to his house and he wrote on the paper he said if i die go and hold that pastor and place it there on his bed. And truly he died so police came to the church and said this is what the man wrote so we have come to arrest and the pastor told them he said what did he say he said if i die arrest that pastor which pastor the devil is not that powerful i tell you i tell you i've discovered by experience the devil is not that powerful that is a place of dominion you get to you can banish the operation of witchcraft in your family you can you can enter into a neighborhood and they are doing all kinds of things there and you stand and make a decree and they vacate that place for you you don't know there is and it's not just for men of god alone it's for every believer that is ready to rise isaiah chapter 66 last scripture and then we'll pray you are beautiful in all your ways. Cause you are beautiful in all your ways. Isaiah 66, look at this from verse 7. Before she was in labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came, she delivered a male child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to give birth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? Read that line, the last line, one to go. For as soon as Zion was in labor, as soon as Zion traveled, as soon, as soon as you begin to travel as soon as you rise in holy anger as soon as you declare enough is enough thus far have you come and thus further shall you not go Jesus understood this principle that was why if you read the gospel according to Luke, you will understand the prayer ministry of Jesus. In almost every chapter in that book, you know, actually Luke was supposed to reveal Jesus as the man. That means that everything about his life, everything that he walked in and he experienced was like every, through every, you know, the natural medium that every man would go through. So Luke chapter 1, the Bible says that they were praying outside the temple and the angel appeared to Zechariah. Luke chapter 2, there was a woman called Anna, gave herself to fasting and prayer. Anna was not a prophetess, but the Bible called her a prophetess from the tribe of Asher. Read your Bible very well in Genesis 49 when Jacob was blessing his children of the tribe of Asher what he told them was that you are going to make royal dainties in other words you will be sewing clothes and making food for kings was there any prophetic thing there was there any prophetic heritage there no but a woman prayed her way into a heritage that because of prayer it may not be allocated to you but it can be it can be taken and given to you God will look at your family. There is no apostle. There is not supposed to be an apostle from that family. But because of your insistence, your hunger in the place of prayer, God will say, I will begin with you. Don't you know that God called Abraham from an idolatrous tribe? 
Abraham came from a tribe of idolatry. But one man's faith positioned him with God. Luke chapter 3, we read it. He came out of the river and was praying and the heavens were opened and the spirit descended as a dove. Luke chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 and Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. Luke chapter 5, he often withdrew himself to pray. Luke chapter 6 verse 12 and Jesus went to pray and he tarried all night when Jewish, in Jewish system all night means 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's 12 hours. Try that one in our, our modern church these days. You are looking for trouble. That Jesus those days, in the midst of that heat and heat of the day and cold in the night in the, in the Middle East, he prayed for... And you know, Jesus was always doing crusade and everything, so he was always tired. But prayer was so much his business, he prayed from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. No wonder in Luke chapter 11, the disciples came to him and said, teach us how to pray, not how to preach, not how to cast out demons. Because they saw that the secret behind everything he did was his prayer life. Today, pray for one hour is a problem for an average Christian. You want to have a prayer conference, you have to do refreshment, gather rice and chicken, call them, let them pray for 30 minutes and then they eat for one hour. Yeah, and they that those are the people that will still go back and complain. You stay long in church, they begin to complain, but they are not complaining for the devil that has been in their family for 30 years. They are not complaining. Ah, don't worry, when you hear that we have gotten our own permanent place, ah, yeah, 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 that's when ministry will start. I tell you, all kinds of meetings will be going on there. You come any time and see people praying there. That's how we can capture this city and turn it around for the kingdom. I'm telling you. As soon as Zion traveled, as soon, the word travel is a prayer term. It's borrowed from childbirth. The place, traveling, is when you come to a place of prayer. Where you begin to insist. It's like the prayer of James chapter 5. A heartfelt and an earnest prayer. That kind of prayer that comes from your depth. It's as though you are feeling the pressure in the spirit inside of your stomach. And you don't leave that place until there is a change in the spirit. If you live like that every day, you will see victory on a regular basis. I'm telling you. The Bible says, for with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God. How many things? All things. Go and pray. You will find out that that thing is true. All things. I heard the story of Papa Idi Adeboye. In his message, he was preaching. When they handed over redeemed to him, he was struggling with the church to grow. And according to the story, he went to uh, what's, what's the name of that country? South Korea to come visit David Yong Kicho, who had the largest church in the world then. And when he went there, he discovered that after the meeting, Yong Kicho took all of them. He was the only black there. Yong Kicho took all of them to a mountain. They call it their prayer mountain. And actually, I did a research on David Yong Kicho and I discovered, according to him, I don't know about now, but then that he had a squad of 200 women that were praying for him every day. Why wouldn't he have the largest church? Papa said he went there. He was struggling for people to come to his church. But he went to South Korea and John Kicho will make an announcement. He said, okay, we have about 50,000 people here today because the hall could only take about 50,000. Say, we have 50,000 people here. Please, next Sunday, those of you that are here, don't come to church. So that the other members that didn't come will come. Yeah? In Africa, when people are Christians are even looking for holiday, holiday, <laughs> just tell them that this Sunday no church. Hey, <laughs> and Young Kicho took them to his prayer mountain, and you would crawl. The, the space in the mountains were small. You would have to crawl into it. You can only kneel down or lie down. 
and the game is that you you stay there and pray i don't know whether it was all night of prayer or you pray until you are satisfied or something like that so papa went there and he stayed there and prayed his life out he said god you must cause this ministry to grow he prayed so much so that when he came out of that place he discovered that the white man had been waiting for him for a long time many years later when he traveled to south korea to preach he met with david young kicho david young kicho said i've been hearing of you now i want you to pray for me story had it that one time he was praying in redeem camp there you, you, you can verify one time pastor he, had, he was praying there in redeem camp that night and he prayed until there was an earthquake in Ogun state the only earthquake ever that has happened he prayed until the whole place shook one man's prayer today you find people crowding even with COVID-19 every time there is what they call that all night service they do Holy Ghost service. You find people cross. What is so interesting about that man's message? But when you begin to pray, you will know that it's not just about what you say. It's the power that backs what you say. You find people sleeping in church. Maybe there's no much prayer on the pulpit. You find witches existing in a local assembly there's no much prayer if it is really a place of prayer the fire will be too much for them to stay there they either are delivered or they check out and i tell you i can't pastor a church where witches are there no it can't happen you it can't happen that a witch you enter and you remain and go like that no way no way the fire will be too much are we ready to pray as soon as zion travel what will be your story time will fail me to tell you the story of many people personally i would have loved to share stories with you but not now i've seen results in my life back to back not this one is not i'm not confused i know that i prayed and i saw the answer i've seen it back to back again and again so prayer for me now has become a business because i've seen that is an investment that works when you truly begin to arise in prayer you come into that realm of dominion and that's the realm where god has called us to live dominion in finances dominion in your career dominion in your business dominion in your marriage dominion in your relationship dominion in all that concerns you are we ready to pray something must give birth in your destiny this night can I say this with us and then we will pray finally? You want to know one of the cures to curses? You hear people say things like generational curses and maybe next week, if God permits, I'll do a teaching on that. Listen, let me, share, let me show you something. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1, I told you from the beginning, I said it was the man that was formed that receive the curses isn't it so curses exist in the flesh but blessings exist where in the spirit now the bible says if any man be in christ is a new creature isn't it all things are passed away all things have become new that is a reality in your spirit not in your flesh that reality exists where in your spirit that's the reason why your mind still needs to keep being renewed by the word so that that reality can find expression so the bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in christ jesus but the end yet he said who walk not after the flesh but after where so it is those who have cultured their life in the spirit that will not have a condemnation against them condemnation is actually the duty of the enemy guilt and condemnation the bible says to those who walk after the spirit there is therefore now no condemnation so every time you begin to pray you are shifting the existence of your life from the flesh to begin to walk in in the spirit that means if you keep prayer as a culture in your life a time will come where you will no longer exist by biological factors 
but you will switch over to the realm of the spirit and begin to exist by the heritage that comes from Christ that means you can come from a family that is cursed but because you understand that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death you will live as though that cause didn't exist you didn't catch what I said <laughs> For the law of the spirit of Christ, life in Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life, it is when you pray, you are activating that law. That's when that law sets you free from the flesh. Rise on your feet, let's pray. Can I share a story with you before we pray? In 2018, I think I've shared it for those of us who are workers. In 2018, I was praying one time. I know that God had called me. I knew that God had anointed me. I know that God had sent me to this part. But there was something that was not opening up about all that. So I went in to pray. Praying one night I was praying I think that was when we started six hour prayer marathon prayer don't worry we'll go back to it let's just get a venue I'm telling you Satan knows that's why let's just get a place we'll deal with the enemy I tell you I began to pray one night the night before the day we had that first marathon prayer you remember we had it here I was praying that night and I was caught up in a vision and in that vision, the Lord took me to the entrance of this city. That place where you have close to Bruno Express. That welcome to. I got there and I was standing in the air facing it in the spirit. As though you are coming into Meduguri. And you will not believe what I saw in the spirit. What I saw was two dragons wrapped around that place. The size of their eyes can be like the size of somebody's head. And they were there staring at me. And the Lord told me, these are the forces that control and monitor everything that happens in this thing. You think that just because you are called into ministry, people will hear of you and everything will be fine. No way. There are controlling powers. It's either you fraternize with them or you stand against them. And God told me, deal with that principality. When I came down from that vision, I opened my eyes physically and I saw like a man standing physically. I'm not telling you dream. Physically. I opened my eyes. I was praying. I saw a man standing before me. He was all dressed in black. And on his clothes, his, his um, garment, there were writings on it. I couldn't see it. And God told me that those writings are the identity of this principality. And immediately it disappeared. That was when I knew that posters alone cannot help you achieve all that God wants you to achieve. That there is a power that commands influence in the spirit. Just because you have a great business idea doesn't mean everything will be well. The devil saw you when you were making all that plan. There are territories where there are powers to ensure that everybody in that territory will look like the territory. In other words, you can start and blossom for a while, but later you will just face out. Go through this city, you will see some business enterprise like that. Started very well, and then all of a sudden they faced out. You think it was ordinary? Weren't there churches that were burnt and churches that remained? I was told there was a time they almost burnt your church, sir. And how God intervened. There are controlling powers. There are territorial forces. There are spirits assigned to regions, assigned to territories, assigned to houses. It is when you begin to pray and stand against them. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. It is when you enter into dominion that you can have your share in that place and do what God has called you to do. Friends, if you don't have anything to pray for, I want you to pray for your family. If you think that all is well, you are okay with where you are, then you can pray for us as a ministry. 
pray for the purposes of God. But if you know that there is something written about your life and who you are now does not look like that which was written, then this night I want you to lift your voice and cry and demand that the heavens will open. That there be a breakthrough in the spirit. That there be a breakthrough over the atmosphere surrounding you. Hallelujah. Listen, we are going to pray two more prayer points and we'll be done. 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. 1 Timothy 1 18. Listen. If God has ever said anything concerning you, this night I want you to take the volume of that which he has spoken and travel before God insist that your life must become the reflection of that which was spoken look at this first timothy 1 18 this charge i commit unto thee son timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou might them by them might as with war a good warfare listen listen hold on this is what it means that god has spoken concerning you but there is a dimension of prayer where you become aggressive where you insist it's as though you are fighting with forces to ensure that your life becomes the reflection of that which God has spoken don't leave everything to time and chance so it's not always that time and chance happens to them all I'm telling you I'm telling you before your eyes December will arrive and some things will not come to pass you must learn to insist you must learn to engage spiritual warfare and not rest until you become that the bible says 
give yourself no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of his people. Can you lift your voice and say, Father, mention those things that have been spoken concerning your life, concerning your finance, your business, your ministry, your academics, your relationship. And tonight insists insist that there be a performance that there be a performance that there be a performance insists for a reality Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. We are praying. Listen. 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 Just pay, pay, pay me your attention now. Listen. This last prayer for some people, it will be deliverance. Listen. Just listen. Please listen to me. Listen. I studied the book of Exodus very well. Listen carefully before we pray. And I discovered that six times Pharaoh negotiated the deliverance of the children of Israel. How many times? Six times. You can study yourself. One time he will say you can go but leave your children and your women. 
Another time he said, you can go leave your cattle behind. In fact, another time he said, don't go anywhere, sacrifice in the land. Six times. And God told Moses, he said, this last plague will I bring upon Egypt. And Pharaoh will let you go. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9, For a great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are adversaries. Listen, some of you is in the area of ministry. Just because you are anointed doesn't mean it will happen like that. I tell you. Saul was anointed, but he was slain. Some of you is your business. You will not rise beyond a limit. Why? Because Satan has seen that the deliverance of the financial destinies of your family members is tied to you. Some of you is your academics. You can name it. Some of you is your relationship. Long relationship. Every time you discuss marriage, like one wind will just blow and everything scatters. It's not ordinary. It's not ordinary. Wherever the adversary has been contending for in your life, this night they must let you go. The Bible says there, there are many adversaries. What is, the, what is the solution? Let God arise and let all his enemies be what? That's your prayer. In the next two minutes, lift your voice and pray. Oh, 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 oh,
Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just be still everywhere. Just be still. Visitation is coming for some people now. Eyes closed. Please follow me. You guys follow me, okay? Observe when I want to minister in the anointing and follow me. Your symbols now, please. There are people that are about to step into another level in the spirit. Father, anyone here under the sound of my voice whose destiny is in need, urgent need of a supernatural shift, from one dimension unto another, from one level unto another, I declare by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, let the hand of God come upon destinies, come upon individuals, experience a shift now, experience a shift now. Experience a shift now. Amen. Experience a shift now. Amen. Help them. Help them. Experience a shift now. Amen. Thou shall exalt my horn as the unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. God is about to anoint some people here with dominion and authority. Just your symbols, just your symbols.
Hallelujah. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Just be quiet, please. Except those who are under the anointing. Just be quiet. You've, you've prayed. Just keep quiet. Listen. Let me minister to you. Let me minister as I see in the spirit now. There are people that God is anointing. Literally, listen. I see an angel moving across this place now. Pouring oil on some people. And that scripture came to me. Thou shalt exalt my horn as the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. For dominion, for authority. Amen. I declare, let that oil come upon somebody now. Amen. Let that oil come upon somebody now. Amen. Anoint every person in this place. From the front to the back, oil of dominion, Amen. oil of authority, Amen. oil that will make your voice to be heard. Amen. Wherever you have been hidden from today, I open you up. Amen. I expose you to grace. Amen. I expose you to life. Amen. I expose you to power. Amen. I expose you to authority. Amen. please lift your hands I'm still praying father anyone here whose destiny has been held captive by the oppression of darkness adversaries that will not let you go standing in front of every door that God opens for you trying to subvert every breakthrough that comes your way I make a demand on the apostolic and prophetic anointing I make a demand on the anointing of Elijah on the anointing of Elisha and I declare let those spirits let you go now Amen. I banish the forces of darkness from your life Amen. from your destiny Amen. and in a name that is above every other name I declare your deliverance now. Amen. I declare your deliverance now. Amen. I break the chains of darkness. Amen. I break the chains of the enemy. Amen. I break the strongholds of hell. Amen. I break the strongholds of hell. Amen. Just help those who are under the anointing, please. Lift your hands. And Father, I declare, in this season, let there be a release of mantles on your children. Amen. Listen carefully. Listen. Mantles that will make you begin to function according to God's purpose for you now. Amen. A grace that supersedes what you have known. Listen. Listen. That is going to rest on you. And God is showing me 21 people that it will rest upon specifically. Just lift your hands, eyes closed. Father, like fire. Like a rain. I declare, mantles in this season for your children to function in the exact capacity as you have ordained and destined for them. Those 21 people you are showing me, I declare, let those mantles be released from heaven. Let it rest upon them now. As I count to 21, Holy Ghost, let it rest upon those 21 people. Mantles that will cause a shift in your life, a shift in your ministry, a shift in your destiny, a shift in the anointing. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Apostolic and prophetic mantles, unusual mantles of grace. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and now 21. All over this place, step into a new dimension of grace, a new dimension of the anointing, a new dimension of prosperity, a new wind of the Holy Ghost. Blow around your life now. Blow around your destiny now. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your spirit. Grow, blow, blow like a mighty spirit of victory, cover us with your Thank you, Father. Let me declare this before we close. I can't describe what I'm seeing right now perfectly. But I'm seeing something that looks like a door in the spirit. And this door is shining. Looks like it's made of precious stones. I see it shining and radiating with light. And I see some of you stepping into that door because it is open. Get ready in the days ahead. Certain things in your life are about to experience a notable shift and transformation, I tell you. For some of you, it's finances. For some of you, it's in the area of your job. For some of you, it's in your spiritual life, I tell you. Grace. Grace to function in this season. Thank you, Father. Wave your hands and just give God praise. Bless his name. Thank you, Father. Thank you for a release. Thank you because destinies have been altered. Thank you because problems have been settled. Prayers are being answered. I see the Lord releasing angels. I see a heavy deployment of angels on the behalf of some of us here. Angels are being released to secure that answer for you. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Very quickly, while we are all standing, if you know you are here and you are not born again, let's give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus today. All standing, no movement. If there are those amongst us here, you don't know Jesus or you have not given your heart to the Lord, or probably you used to be born again but you derailed and you want to rededicate, you want a restoration. I want to give you the next few seconds, wherever you are, I want you to lift your right hand. I will pray for you now. Shortly before we leave this place. If there are those amongst us here, if there are none, then we'll just proceed. But if there are those here who need to say yes to Jesus, that's where dominion starts. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You can't receive answers from a God that you don't know or you have not identified with. If you are here and you want to say yes to Jesus, or perhaps you want to rededicate again your life to the Lord, just raise your right hand and I will pray. If there are none, we will just come to bring the service to a close. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The Lord just spoke to me in my ears for somebody here. I just heard that in the spirit. I don't know who you are. But I heard the battle is over. I just, I don't know. I just heard it in my ears now. And I declare that that will become somebody's testimony this night. Every battle you have fought. 
whether to you or your family, this night it comes to an end. It comes to an end. And the oppressor lets you go this night. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We are tonight for all that you have done. And we know that our lives will never be the same again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.